Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our live session for the 128 to 28 folks. And we're gonna start by just looking at like one of the assignments. Uh, so we can kind of take a look at assignment two and we're doing it in the whole process right now. Um, you just in general, as you think about the overall process, that's kind of boring. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I've sent out a new note thinking about just kind of recommended, oh, kind of due dates, and just kind of thinking about it. The big thing is that really, as you move ahead and think about the rest of the quarter, we're already in week six, which is hard to believe already. So there's really only four weeks left to what's going on around here. So here's what I'd actually recommend just in terms of thinking about the assignments. You just don't want to get under the uh, water at the end of the quarter and just have everything build up on you. You should probably be kind of in the middle of assignment two or three right now. Um, two and three actually work really well together. So if you're working on two, three is a very natural extension where you just apply some materials and do some rendering to it. So yeah, those two kind of work together. I'd sort of suggest that basically you probably want to be in pretty good shape with those by about next week at this time. So try to get those things finished up this weekend if you can and kind of be ready to talk about them next week. Four and five you're going to find actually work together too. Four and five is this notion of building a community and commons, so it's like a student center for the uh, School of Engineering here, kind of like our Wong Center. Um, so if you're designing that building in four, you'll design the basic building layout. In five, you'll actually put a structure inside of it. Okay, so those again sort of work together. And I think a reasonable time frame is around two weeks for those. So I'd say if you get two and three done by next week, try for about two weeks later in terms of four and five. The last assignment, assignment six, we actually build a little parametric family of some furniture and you build a little parametric family of, or I think a little structural element. Yeah, that'll take oh, about a week. So aim for around June 1st there. So if you're kind of on track for those dates, you should be in good shape. So if you're ahead of that, super. If you're behind that a little bit, no worries. Just go ahead and try and get you yourself up to speed with two and three so that we can sort of uh, have those done. But what we're going to do today is look at two so we can use that as an example and kind of think about what other people are doing and how uh, you want to I don't know, sort of old project yourself. So let me kind of take a look. Okay, so super. It looks like we have it out here. Let me open up. Let's see if I can find it out here in my little file system. I've always got more drives and I know what to do with it. Okay, so where are we? Assignment two, there you go. Let's go ahead and take a look. It's actually the most up-to-date one. What's that? It's the other one. Oh, no worries. I'll go back to that one instead. Forgot to delete. <laughs> no worries. This one's the same, but it doesn't have a pad. You build a pad? No worries. Let's get the most current version so we're kind of giving you advice on the best one. A little bit of updating. Actually, I can cancel up that, that upgrade because we know that's not going to be it. Let's try the other one. Open. And the very last one. No, second to last one. Most oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, okay. It's interesting. The date is different. But that's it? Yeah. Okay, no worries. Most up to date. Well, <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a look. Okay, and this is upgrading from 2015 to 2016. So that tells me on your machine you have uh, the 2015 version of Revit. No worries. That's kind of A-OK. -okay. Um, if I change anything here, it would change it into 2016. So whatever. Uh, if I change things here, you can either finish it on like a, one of these like uh, machines here in the lab, okay. yeah. or just kind of follow along in your own machine. <laughs> I'm always walking around changing people's files. <laughs> Although at some point, we should get you upgraded on your machine. Okay, so let's check this out. You can even sort of walk me through a little bit. Okay, so I am looking at, well, just kind of talk me through the building a little bit in terms sure. of how we want to approach it. So we're on the hillside here. Yeah, so the entrance is on the other side. Or that side, yep, yep. Okay, and that's the downhill side. Yes. Okay, very good. And then it looks like you have this sort of, oh, I'm just going to look at it. Kind of like sort of two bay window sort of structures facing yeah. uphill right now. Yeah. Got it? Okay. No worries. Let's just go ahead and take a look and you can sort of walk us through. 
what I'm going to do is go through and in your 3D view here, just orient it towards the uh, two different plans. I could go through and like right click here and say orient to view to your lower level. It's kind of just one of these like funny tricks I like to play. And then that'll just give you a little 3D view of the first floor. I'll take that back. There it goes. So zoom on in. And let's tell me about your building. So you walk in, and it's like a big living room. Mm -hmm. um, and to the left is the kitchen. It's open. Mm -hmm. uh, and then to the right is a, store, uh, like a yoga room. Oh, wow. I see, I see some interesting uh, yoga mats in there from uh, Revit City. Yeah, and then like a little storage room. Fantastic. OK, very good. Now, as I look at this, I'm just looking at the overall relationship of the building pad and all that kind of stuff. So you basically have a building pad extending out. It's kind of like we're going to extend out and put some retaining walls around the earth and create a nice even pad for you. Yeah. Okay, no worries. Is that fine? That is fine in terms of what's going on. A couple things for you just at this level. We'll get into that. We'll look upstairs in just a second. As I'm looking at the pad, the pad here is kind of a really good surface. It goes ahead and cuts away the earth, which is kind of nice. What I'll often do is I'll actually lower it down just a little bit so that I can put a finished floor on top of it. Because what happens is it sort of has a sort of basic concrete surface. That's kind of OK. Mm -hmm. But what happens is it's not really a floor in the proper sense. In fact, you may have a floor here already. But I see a little bit of bleeding in there. So let me kind of see what's going on. Okay. If I, well, what I mean by bleeding is you sort of see that area where in the middle it's kind of white and blue at the same time? Yeah. Okay. That usually indicates that there's two things like right on top of each other at the same level. So let me go ahead and lower your pad down just a little bit. Okay, we'll think about the pad as actually just being some big scraped element of earth, like it's a, uh, yeah, moving away. And it looks like you indeed do have a second floor right here. Okay, so that's actually the proper floor. What's happening is that pad has sort of disappeared a little bit just because in the section box, let me see if I can pop the section box down. We're still a little bit below the section box. There we go. So now we're back again. So now tell me about this first floor. Do you want concrete on the first floor? Or do you want like some wood or a finished material? Or what would you like on that first floor? Okay, so if we want to do that, here's the deal. We got this concrete slab. He's actually looking pretty good right now. If I want to put a wood finish on top of it, what I need to do is either, I can do it two ways. I can either go through and add a very thin layer of wood, like an inch thick, and kind of put it an inch higher, or I can actually add it into the concrete, sort of add it as another layer on top of it. Since you have the concrete pretty much just running around inside here, let me go ahead and go through and create a new material. It's going to be concrete slab with wood finish. That's actually sort of a very common sort of scenario. I even have that in my own home. So I'll duplicate this. I'll say concrete slab. Okay. Plus, oh, usually we'll put like engineered wood or something like that. Something where it's on plywood, a little bit of wood finish. It's maybe about like three quarters of an inch thick, five eighths of an inch thick. So I created a new material by duplicating. Now I'm just going to edit and add a new layer to this. I'll move the layer up above and say that it's going to be, oh, let's see if I can find some wood flooring or something like that. There we have some. Now, we haven't been paying much attention to the materials properties yet, but it's going to be important to you when we start doing our rendering. So, in our material dialog, there's the material wood flooring. It's going to be on the top. In the graphics appearance, that's the appearance when we shade the view. If we shade a view, it shows the graphics appearance. It looks like it's kind of this kind of tanny color with these black lines and like three inches parallel. So that's what's going to show up in the background right now when we do it. Okay. When we render it, just because we're going to get ready for assignment three, what happens is then it uses this setting. It's the appearance setting, and it uses that photographic image. So there's this game of materials, and every material has a photographic appearance as well as a graphics appearance or a graphics sort of rendering style. So as we go ahead and move ahead, 
if wood flooring wants to be a slightly different color, for example, right now it's kind of this beech wood, kind of a kind of light color with some planking on it. What we can do is actually go through and change the appearance that's associated with the main wood flooring. So the material can have a different appearance. So right now it's wood flooring. If I wanted to change that to a different color of wood, what I can do is click on this little guy. And if I go sort of flooring in this viewer, it'll show us just some of the standard oh, Revit materials. So under flooring, wood, you have a lot of, you have bamboo, you have beach planks, cherry, just coloring depending on what wood you want. So I'm just gonna keep it the same color that it is though. But just so you know, there's always this thing as we do the materials of the graphic appearance and the rendered appearance, okay? And let's show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna just switch this out, okay? This floor now has wood floor. Oops, have to give it a thickness. Let's say, oh, 5 eighths of an inch, something like that. Can you move it up to the first? Actually, I'm going to make that a finished layer. Say again? You put it up to the first layer? Yeah, because the way this works is that's the top, and it's like top going all the way down to the bottom. Okay. So we're putting it up there. Because it's above the core, it's actually going to be above the level one. It's actually on top. So layer there. You put five eighths. Yeah, put five eighths. That's about right for engineered wood. Maybe like three quarters, but five eighths is pretty good for what we put in there now. Just so you know, we'd probably also put a little layer of padding in there so when you walk across it, it has like a soft sound. It doesn't go clackety clack. So I'll say okay. Notice the thickness got just a little bit thicker. But now what's gonna happen in our rendered appearance, or in our shaded appearance. Notice it looks like wood there right now. But how this actually plays in in terms of these two different appearances is, okay, this is the shaded appearance. The shaded appearance, every material shows up in what's called the graphic appearance. It's that or graphic style. Um, all of these things, wood siding has a graphic style. If you go zoom it on in there, you'll see yeah, it's kind of okay looking. It's enough for a very quick representation. If you want to see a little bit closer to what the finished appearance is going to be like, though, you can turn it up a notch and go to realistic. And what realistic does is it swaps in as opposed to the just graphic appearance, okay, which is the shading and the color, it actually puts the imagery in, the image that's actually part of the photograph. So you can see the wood changes, the siding changes, the wood frame over here on the door gets a little bit grainy to it. It looks like this is probably just a painted surface. Okay. And that's what's typically called the realistic appearance. So the good news is, and this is what's going to get to assignment three, there's really no difference between assignment two and assignment three. It's pretty much to take your assignment two model and just check to make sure that all the finishes look right, okay, that they're all mapped. About the only way you get in sort of trouble generally when you're working is it's when the colors or the materials are mapped to no material, then they'll just sort of show up as a dull gray. And whenever you see dull gray, that's usually an indication that there's not a proper material assigned to that. So as I'm looking at this, the concrete's not too bad. The color of the walls is not too bad, although it's a little bit slightly gray. Let's talk about that. Please. Let's check it out. So let's see what's going on on your so machine. I made the, the new concrete slab Got it. with wood. Okay. Okay, and let's, let's take a look at the properties here. Okay, and the edit structure. And it looks like you're in there. Super. Okay, so that is there. Say so okay. Okay, but it's still, what happens when you finish? Oh, I know what it is. Okay. Um, it's, I think that we created a new floor as opposed to changing the existing one. No worries, let's do this, because you did it, you made a nice new material, I don't want to lose that. Make a teeny tiny, like a, yeah, just a little box outside there somewhere. We're going to delete it in a second just because I want to save your new material. Okay, now finish that. That's just a new dumb floor. Okay, <laughs> but now go back and choose your floor. Sometimes it's easier in 3D. So go to your main 3D view. 
okay? Oh, and if you want to have the same view I have, there we go. Now choose the floor, which is right there in the middle. I can sort of see the black line around it. There you go. Change it to be your new material. Got it? Now, it's bleeding a little because it's right at the same level, so let's take the pad. We're going to lower your pad just a hair. So choose the pad, maybe right on the corner. There you go. And lower it down like two or three inches, just so it's below. Or actually, make it a negative three inches. Okay, now we're good. Okay, no worries. Okay, so we're going to start playing around as we keep going about this notion of appearance. So we'll look at your model and your share, but we're also going to, we're going to keep going ahead to look at appearances just so we are thinking ahead to assignment three. Okay, so now as I'm looking at this, let's keep on going through your model. I'm looking at these wall surfaces. These wall surfaces, if they're looking a little gray to you, not to worry. The way to approach that is it's just there's a color to this has a surface called gypsum board so if i choose edit and i take a look at the it's, it's clapboard siding on the outside that's the stuff over here the gypsum board's on the inside you can take a look at its appearance also you'll see it's kind of a medium grayish sort of color over here it's kind of a medium gray there in the range of zero to 256 153 is just kind of in the middle somewhere. So if we want to sort of whiten that up a little bit, kind of reflect a little more light, what I can do is just change the color and maybe make it just a little bit whiter. Brighten up the place. I could also make it a slightly tinted color if I want to make it more of a tan color, a yellow color. I can sort of tint it. Okay, it's a kind of a pale yellow right now. Say okay. Notice that in the little thumbnail, which is giving us a pretty good color, you might be able to see that it's kind of very slightly yellow right now. So now our gypsum wall board will be yellow. Notice it's actually quite precise about what we can do. It's sort of a flat finish versus a glossy finish. It's applied with a brush. Actually, that's kind of funny. It might be a little bit smoother as far as the texture goes to say that it's applied with a roller or sprayed. It's a slight difference when you brush things on, you get brush strokes, versus when you spray, it comes to, it's a little bit flatter, okay? So, and that'll have to do with how it reflects light and what the surface texture feels like. So I can change the appearance of anything. Notice that when I change the appearance, the graphics shading also changed a little bit. Let's talk about that. And the reason why is we have this checkbox that says you render appearance turned on. What happens then is, if you change the render appearance to a color, the graphic shading will pick it up too. And what it does is it kind of just takes whatever your image is over here and uses that, tries to abstract from that, pull out what it considers to be the base color. So that's generally a good thing. I like to leave those things turned on. That way my shading and my rendering sort of tend to look the same. So great. I'm going to go for these slightly yellowier walls, just to brighten them up a hair. And when you do that, does that change? It changes all of them, right? So all of the gypsum board just changed. So any gypsum board on the walls, any gypsum board on the ceiling, all that changed. So if we want to have different walls and different colors, I might create two different materials that have the color. Or you're going to find out I can paint, which is sort of another kind of cool thing. But let's keep walking around your house here a little bit. So for the most part, things are looking very good down here. Just as I look at it architecturally, let me make just sort of a couple observations here. Let's take a look at your stairs. Stairs are always one of the tricky things for people, just because they're kind of hard. They sort of take up more space than you think they ought to. Yeah. Okay, but it looks like you have a nice stair here. It looks like, well, I'm gonna look at it in the floor plan. It might be a little kind of strange right there. It looks like it might come out a little. And we got the size of this landing. Okay, let's take a look at it in the floor plan view. So here we are in your stairs, and ah, okay. It did have what I sort of was looking at. You see where it's a little pinch right here, where we have a stair, it gets a little bit narrow, then it gets wider again. And that just has to do with the landing, which is formed as the junction between the two different sort of sections. What we can do, it's really easy, is we can edit your stair. And that landing sort of formed automatically. See, it's got a little pinch point in it. If I want to fix that, what I'll do is just take this, 
and I can just arrow it down or move it down, it's going to straighten it out. So that just kind of straightens that out. Now I'm not doing too bad. Often we sometimes have to worry about where the landing is coming relative to the door. There's all these kind of little things you can think about relative to that. But we'll just remove that pinch point. And we have the landing coming up here. Now as I look at the landing on the stairs versus the kind of uh, main stairway, another thing we could sort of change is, you see where we have the landing is pretty wide before the stair starts. If on the upper floor, it'd be helpful to have the stairs finish a little earlier so you have more room in the floor. We can pull that back a little bit. It just really depends on what you want. And yeah, the best way to guess is to go to, let me go to the second floor. So here's your stairs here. So up here on the second floor, if I sort of pull that stairway down about two and a half feet, do you think that'd be useful to you have a little more space here at the top? Okay, so if that's the case, we'll just take this, and I can again using the arrow key, or I can use the move tool, just kind of shove it down a little. The way the rule works, just so you sort of know by building code, is that if our stairway is three feet wide, the landing has to be three feet wide. Okay, it has to be the same size as the legs so that you don't sort of end up pinching. Okay, great. Let's finish that up. We'll go back downstairs again. That's just my graphics. Let's see if I can come back in here and kind of keep on looking. So that's looking pretty good. Now on the stairway, it looks like you have a nice stairway that has some wooden treads to it. Something like that, kind of little white risers. That's kind of fine. We've got this sort of wood trimmed house. This is kind of a very residential sort of uh, railing to it. It's got all those little pickets and has a railing at the top. There's some other choices that are available too, just when you create the stairs. We could make it a, a pipe rail, that's sort of a more modern kind of like steel sort of appearance. And we can customize these rails almost infinitely. There's amazing how many options there are. We can make them glass, we can make wire in there, we can do all these different things. But I just want you to know there's some options, but I'll put it back to the one you had. Like the pipe one better? Okay, I'll put it that in. Okay. This is looking good. I like that like ball chair. That's actually very nice too. So you, I can tell you've discovered Revit City and like uh, all the things you could pull out there. It's, yeah, you could spend a lot of hours on that. <laughs> You can spend almost infinite hours out there. Okay, I'm noticing the refrigerator's backwards. <laughs> that happens, no worries, that's, that's when you put them in. Let me flip that around. I'll rotate this. Swing it 180. Looking good. Go back out here again. And then as I look at your kitchen area, now this is one of those things where you don't have to go very far for what we're doing today. You have a countertop in there, and that's fine in terms of the sink and countertop and all that stuff working together. As you move ahead, you may want to start adding some cabinets in there. Okay, um, and cabinets are really just another part. Yeah, often at early on in the design, I'll just sort of do what you did. I just put a countertop in there to sort of indicate the location. And then I'll add the part the cabinets in a little bit later. But when you do come time to add the cabinets, you say place. And you'll say, oh, I think we have some base cabinets. There's a base cabinet, like a 36 inch base cabinet. And you can go ahead and try and put it on the wall there. Okay, now. I'm putting I put it in 3D, which is honestly always a little bit hard, you know, in terms of, uh, oh, just trying to get precisely the alignment. Often it's better to do it in the floor plan. Some other things I would notice, just some little things. Since it's looking so good, I, I gave you lots of little nuance. We have, here's the countertop, and here you have the stove at the end. I can either move the stove down a few inches, or I might shrink the countertop up a few inches, either one of those. Level with the stove. 
Okay, so let's think about this. So let's think about this one. This one is actually defined. It has lengths right there. Let me see what else is in here. I'm going to push this over here. That's the refrigerator. I want to see if there's little blue arrows. There's not. Oh, there they are. Right, so on the end. This little arrow right here, that's actually a little drag arrow. So you can go ahead and shorten the countertop that way. All that's doing is it's a shortcut for changing this number right here. So that might be good. Let me go ahead and I'll just pull the stove forward an inch. Even in here for your countertop, if I'm getting really precise, I might go ahead and see the countertop and here's the wall. I might align that or move it, but just basically go from the wall surface and pull the countertop right up to it. So that's how you get it. But all we did was really, if you choose the countertop, the countertop object you're using is a pretty good one in that it has like the hole that can slide around, it has like the length that can change around a little bit. So that's not too awfully bad. Actually, you'll see here underneath, my cabinet's kind of back in the wall. That's a little bit funny. Let me change it to wireframe so I can fix that. There's the cabinet. Looks like it's sort of, sort of stuck back in too far. That's the danger of doing things in 3D sometimes. <laughs> Okay, that's probably a little bit better. Now, other things I might think about are, just again, this is more of an architectural comment. What'll happen in here is, I got the window kind of hanging around. <laughs> that window is a little tall for the countertop. So what I might do is there, just change it to something a little shyer. Say 36 by 48. But at the same time, I'm gonna leave the head height at like seven feet. So if you do a four foot window and the head height is at seven feet, the window sill is really right at the countertop. So maybe even that's a little bit too long. So maybe I could go 24, but 24 feels too skinny. So this is a great case where I might want a new size. So not 36 by 48, but not 36 by 36, maybe 42. And how you do that, if you want to create a new one is just edit the type. And I'll duplicate that, and I'll say 36 by 42. That's just a name. Then I'll change the height. Okay, and I'll put it up at seven feet again. I'll make this one that same 36 by 42. That's seven feet. Oops. Okay, now, looking pretty good. One little thing I hadn't noticed until right now is, can you see on that wall that the interior surface and the exterior surface are flipped? I got the siding on the inside. Oh, yeah. And that's an easy thing to fix if you want to fix that. You can either do it in the floor plan view, or you can even right click on it here, and you can say, change the wall's orientation. And it just rotates it around. Okay, so your downstairs is looking pretty darn sweet. That's looking nice. You know, that's really very close to rendering. We can do some things. We can put pictures on the wall. We can put plants. And we do all sorts of things to sort of dress it up. But I think, for the most part, yeah, you're looking pretty good down there. Okay, so let's go upstairs. Let's sort of see how upstairs feels. So for upstairs, I can do it in the floor plan. Or again, what I tend to like to do is I'll right click in the 3D view. And just take a look. Just gonna move my section box up. So, oh, tell me about your world upstairs. This is looking interesting. You found some nice pieces. Um, yes, it's two bedroom, and then there's a huge space in the middle. Okay. It's like a like recreation desk, space. And then there's like a guitar and easel to paint. You really have to rotate. Oh, I see. So we got a little uh, guitar and uh, the easel over here. We get natural light from the north side. That feels good. I got these two bedrooms. Got a bathroom on this side. Excellent. Looks like what do I have over here. We have a bathroom over here too. And that one looks like something interesting going on with the walls there. We'll take a look at that. As I'm looking up here, things are looking generally pretty good. Let's think about this. Do you have what the, the floor is here? Although oh, the floor is that white surface. Let's go ahead and change that. 
How about, let's see if I can grab it. What I want to do is, uh, let's see if I can get it on the edge. How do you do it so if you want to do like tile in the bathroom? Sure, let's talk about that. Okay, for the most part, the floor right now is just this concrete floor, and we want to start changing that. So let's change the, the overall floor, then we'll go back and change that. Let me try it in the upper level and get it over there. Sure. Well, actually, we'll figure that out. Yeah, I'm underlaying. I can see the lower level there. Yeah. Let's go here. I'm having trouble selecting it, so let me try doing the other thing that I'll sometimes do when I'm having trouble selecting is I'll cut a section. Because if I have a section, I can usually grab things pretty precisely. So let's do this. I'll cut a section through here. you have a floor in here somewhere, or at least I think you have a floor in there. Don't you? Maybe not. Did I do something to delete it by accident? That's our wall below. That's there. Where is my floor? Could be. I don't think I have a floor. Oh, maybe not. Okay, no worries. That is going to be easy to fix. Okay, here's the deal. Although, let's go to lower level. We got the floor down here. Your structure happens to be very, very regular. Is that correct? It sort of looks about the same on the upper level as it on the lower level. So we can draw it on the upper floor just the same way we sketched it down here. But we could also just copy it and paste it aligned to the upper level. And that's kind of a cool trick. That just goes ahead and takes the same thing and kind of puts it up at that upper level. Okay, now I got a floor. Now, my floor is a little different over here because this is says a concrete slab with some wood on top. That's probably not the floor I want up there. Upstairs on this upper floor, I might use just something called wood joists with wood on top. Okay, that'd be a little more common for the way we typically build a two story house. So let me come over here and say wood joist with a wood finish. It's a little bit thicker. We'll come on in here. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this. We'll look at it from the top. Okay, there it is. It's not looking too bad but I am gonna go through and suggest a change for you, actually to both levels. I hadn't noticed it when we were downstairs, but we'll fix it there too. Upstairs here in particular, well downstairs you have the concrete walls, so it makes sense that they were inside. Upstairs here, it turns out the lines aren't gonna be quite here. What happens is when we run the joists, what we tend to do is actually run them to the outer surface of the walls, or the uh, outer surface of the core. So let me go ahead and kind of show you what I mean. I'll take this guy and I'll edit its boundary. And you see how right now it's going to, it's really the inner face right there. What I typically want to do is put it to the outer face. So I really want to get it out to that line. Okay, that's the outside face of the studs. Why is this Okay, this is when we're editing the floor. Okay. We want to have this kind of a relationship. We want to say that the floor actually comes to the outside face of where the wall studs are. But I'm going to go ahead and take a look at something else, too, and just make sure. Because I think this is a, there's a very fine point of alignment sort of question, but we'll sort of figure this out. And I can tell best in your section views. I'm going to move a couple, but then I'm going to figure out where your walls really are. Because it turns out between the first and second floor, there's actually a very precise relationship that I have the walls with. And let's kind of, I'm gonna finish that and let's take a look. Well, actually, no, you have, in your case, let's take a look at it. Since you aren't underground, you just have wood walls all the way around, right? So in that case, what we would typically do is 
we would take all of your different like uh, floors and we would run them out to the level where we put them is actually, we kind of change it so it's a little finer so you can see all the layers. It's really right here at this line. What happens is you're right at the inside face of the core. We're going to take it to the outside face of the core. And the reason is when that wood wall is sitting there, you actually want to sit right on top of the concrete. Okay, so good day, sir. Go ahead and fix this. What I'm going to do is go through and grab the floor really on both floors because your walls line up okay. And really say, here's the floor here. Let me edit its boundary. And to make this work, what you need to do is just turn it up to fine so you can really see all the layers of the walls. But usually what happens is this is the inside face and that's the outside face. It's right there. Now let's see how you did this because you might have actually done it. I think you did. I can just flip it. Okay. When you picked, you said extend it to the core. You did great there. I just needed to hit that arrow and now they're all out to the outside edge as opposed to the inside edge. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the upper level. We'll choose this. Let's say edit the boundary. Okay. And what's happening is you can sort of see it right over here. We have the outside and the inside here. And if I flip that arrow, it'll go to the outside. That might actually fix a bunch of them. If not, we'll just go through and fix them independently, one at a time. OK, that looks like it pulled them out. Looks like over here, I got a couple more going on here. So again, I'm just going to choose the ones that are on the inside and flip it to the outside. Is this the wall that you're flipping? Is this the wall that you're flipping? Actually, what I'm flipping is actually the edge of the floor. I'm flipping the edge of the floor so it goes to the outside. So go ahead and um, choose the floor boundary, or choose the floor itself, okay, and say edit its boundary. Now, you see that pink line that's on the inside edge? I'm going to choose the pink line. And now hit the, the uh, arrows. Okay, now it's flipped to the outside. We always want it to be to the outside edge. Okay, so let's see it. They might have it all the way around. Okay, I think you actually do have it all the way around there. Okay, looking good on the first floor. The second floor, there's just more pieces to fix. Oh, that's, well, that's And then when I, so when I tried to do the floor on the second floor. Okay. Let's say I want a little carpet. I do this. Mm -hmm. Now, as you're clicking, watch this. See how some of those are ending up on the inside versus the outside? Go ahead and you know, see it's on the inside here. Go ahead and click on the pink line. Actually, you might have to use the modify tool because you're not putting another one in. Okay. And click on the pink line. Now flip it. There you go. And now it's on the outside. <laughs> Okay, now that just has to do right over here in the corner. Go ahead and trim that up because we have to have the pink lines uh, being a closed loop. So you can either drag it or I often trim it either way. But trim will be right next to it. There you go. So choose. And actually try this one. It looks like it heads to a corner. That's carpeting that room. Now, you're on to sort of an interesting thing. Let me give you just a little nuance on there. Is that when you finish this, okay, I approached it, I just went ahead and put wood all over. I'm going to say no for it. Okay. And as you think about this floor, you want some different surfaces, right? I, I sort of heard you might want some tile in the bathrooms. You want carpet in the main room? Or tell me about the floor up here. Do you want any of it to be like uh, wood or some tile? Or how do, what do you want up here? Carpet in the all spaces of the bathrooms and tiles. Okay. So what I might do is this, and this is a bit of a fudge, but it works. I'll take and do the whole floor. 
as carpet. Okay, that's a starting point. Okay, but then what I'll do is I'll go back and say, let's see if I can go that. For the bathrooms, go back and add just some tile there. And here's the deal. I'll tell you what's going on with the floors. It's just kind of a little, uh, you know, it's just, uh, there's debates about the best way to model this. There's the subfloor, which is actually a whole lot of plywood. And then under the subfloor, or not the subfloor, there's a the finished floor. We often, though, don't model it that way very carefully. So what we'll go through and do is we'll go through and actually put a floor just with finish in it in the area where you want it to be a little bit different. So we have a floor that goes up to zero, level upper level zero, that has just a carpet on it. What I can do is create another floor that's just ceramic tile. So I'll grab the one that's a combination of joists and tile, and I'll duplicate that. I'll say ceramic tile finish. Okay. And only have a single layer to it. We'll just go ahead and have, oh, I'll take out all this stuff down here. that down. I'll move this down. Oops, I need to leave that. Let's see if this will let me do it. Okay, I have three quarters of an inch of basically tile now. Okay, and with that tile floor, what I could then do is just put it in the bathroom area. Now in a way, that's actually sort of like the way they would really do it. They would tend to build the overall just plywood floor in the entire kind of space, and then they would just go back and add the tile in the specific spaces where they want that. Yep. Where the cheat is, is I also just put the carpet on for the main space. But the truth is, if we're really doing it accurately, we do everything as plywood, and then we put the carpet as a finish, and we put the ceramic tile as a finish. But this is that whole thing where sometimes just for expediency, you do it you know, in a way that you know is a little bit wrong, but it's easier to model. But that's not really accurate. So purists would tell you that you want to go through and like uh, do the subfloor first, and then go through and put the finish floor on top. Now, since this floor is going to be on top of another floor, I'm going to raise it up just a little bit, just going to give it its upper surface so it's not right at the concrete level, or the wood floor. Finish that. Okay, so now I have some tile in that bathroom. So your floors are looking good in terms of what's going on. You're going to go through and fix that. There's just a couple little things we'll do over here. Let's talk about your bathroom here for a second. You have, oh, what would I call that? It's a little bit interesting as bathrooms <laughs> go. Okay, um, I guess that kind of works. You're just sort of fighting for space, right? So we could think about this a couple different ways. We could go ahead and, well, that's a sort of an odd shape there right now. Let's think about this. It's not too awfully bad. If you, it can be kind of slanted like that and kind of preserve that. You could also sort of square off the wall if you want to. Again, there's no good solution to this, or there could be any number of solutions. I'll go up to roof here. You can square that out. Some people might like that better, maybe not. I don't know, it's a little bit tricky. I think you're just sort of fighting for space. Another thing to think about though is, you know, the first floor and the second floor don't have to line up with each other. They can actually overhang a little. So I might think about doing something like this. And again, this is strictly your call in terms of what you want to do. You see that over here, let me turn off the section box. You have this first floor and the second floor, and really they're lined up perfectly with each other. If you're feeling that your bathroom is a little bit squishy here, what I might think about doing, this is just sort of an architectural suggestion, is just cantilevering this out a little. Pull it out a little bit over here. You flip the wall, looks like the wall's flipped. And then I can go through and just move all of this stuff a little further down.
it's okay to have things like uh, lined up like this. We could say, okay, so that's gonna be my bathroom. I'll still pull it up here. The shower could be a little bigger. Maybe I'll even rotate my toilet around. And again, I make a lot of suggestions. Don't think that you have to implement any of these. It's just all just ideas to think about. Now I could take this wall, maybe pull it across. I'll put a door in over here. Maybe flip it around. Now, the interesting thing about bathrooms, in terms of how you want to approach it, if you want to put the door in the middle of the wall, it's actually good. It's kind of more like this with a toilet behind it. People are sort of interesting. When it tends to be like if you're lying in bed and you're looking through the door, you'd rather see the sink than the toilet. So just kind of think about that, think about the relationship you want to have there. So if you do something like this, not to worry, we'll just edit the floor. Pull it down. But go ahead and give yourself breathing room. You got room. So go ahead and if it makes sense. Kind of stretch that out a little bit. Let's finish that up. Okay, now there's just a couple minutes left before you're running. I want to do this one last thing, just in terms of helping kind of correct things for you. And that is on this stairway. You'll notice the stairway goes poking on up through that floor, and that's looking kind of okay, except for when you're walking on through, you're probably going to hit your head on that. So what we need to do is just cut a little hole in our floor, right above the stairway. And that's really easy to do. What you can do is when you're making your floor, and I keep on editing the boundary of the floor, okay, if you need a little hole for the stairway, all you gotta do is basically go through and have the pink lines wrap around it, as opposed to uh, kind of being covering it. So what I can do is Maybe make a boundary line right here, a boundary line right here. I'll put one at the top of the stairs and at the bottom of the stairs. And now I'm just going to trim the boundaries so that that hole where the stair is is actually included. Let me put a line on the side here too. Anytime you go through and put a hole in a floor boundary, it'll make a hole. So that'll actually cut out for the stairway. Just so you know how the general principle works, even if you put a hole, oh, like right here in the center, that'll just cut a hole right in the center of the floor. So anywhere there's a loop inside of a loop, it cuts a hole. Oh, I was just showing you oh. to put it in a hole there. I wouldn't put it there. Okay. <laughs> you drop things down to the kitchen. Kind of nice bathtub. That's actually really gorgeous looking. Okay, so we're coming over here. We have a nice hole so you can come on up there. We have our stairways that are coming up there. That's looking good. Now, last thing, and then I'll let you run. Actually, we should have you ask any questions you want. But basically, you can see how, see how, for example, these little walls from the upper or the lower floor are kind of poking up in? Well, actually, isn't that floor at a funny spot? Are those windows at, oh, something's at a funny spot. I think I was looking at it at a very funny angle. There we go. Okay. See how that floor right there is just a little bit kind of, it's like it's poking up and kind of almost sticking through the floor. And the reason is it goes all the way up to level two and this floor is right at level two. So they're, again, they're right at the same level. They're kind of intersecting with each other. So the way we tend to fix that is we'll take this and we'll attach it to the bottom, and that way it'll stop at the bottom of the floor joist. So if you choose the wall, you can say attach it, and then let's see if I can get the floor. Okay. And then it'll attach it so that it stops at the bottom as opposed to being right through the top. Okay. But little things like that to fix up, but overall I think you're looking great in terms of the assignment. You kind of just you know keep on giving yourself little bits of room and kind of fixing things like that. But where you're going to go next in terms of just moving ahead to assignment three is really just thinking about you know rendering this in a couple of different ways. 
the idea was always either, like, this is called the realistic view. Okay. This is more the shaded view. So part of the assignment is really just to come up with two different versions, one that's shaded and one's realistic that has some different visual styles you like. Okay. And then we make a photo of the realistic rendering of it too. And let's kind of show you those three different things. Actually, you're running out right now. So in general, what you're going to do is play around with the settings up here in graphic display options. Okay, shaded versus uh, realistic. There's uh, something in there about sketchy lines that I suggest playing with. And watch what the effect of this is. That just sort of gives you a slightly more hand-drawn appearance, which sometimes when you're starting to do uh, an uh, image that you want to share with people and give them the sense that they keep changing things is a nice way because it feels a little less finished. So it sort of invites people to think about really uh, being able to change things a little bit more. So sketchy lines are one thing you want to do. But in the end, what you're going to do is you're going to say render this. That's the last part of assignment three. And that's where you go through and say that you want the highest quality. So we turn on rendering. Just say render, sun only. Exterior renderings tend to work out really easily. So this is where, as we do, and put all the materials in there, it pays off in the end. Let's see what it does. That's too dark, but I can adjust the exposure. Gotta get something that looks a little bit closer. But this is where all those rendering appearances become very important because as you go through and this is a very coarse one, so it's very kind of crude right now. But is all the rendering appearances will show up here in great detail. Actually, that's what we pretty good at the end. Okay, so good luck. You're actually in great shape in terms of like, uh, yeah, continuing to plug with it. But yeah. for next week, yeah, finish some of those things and come in with some materials. Yeah. And we'll try uh, checking out the renderings. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Amir, how are you? A very good question. So go ahead and show me your overall layout and then I'll illustrate on the screen so people who aren't here can see too. But show me your layout. So it's a, a straight here right now? Yes. Very good. And you want to come up? Okay, and we're going to have a landing. Okay, actually, let's do this. Okay. So in general, it's about making stairs and landings and things like that? Yes. Great. Okay, nice. That's actually very nice. You have, yeah, that's a good hand. <laughs> yeah, I'm with a, although it's very, yeah, it's simple, but it's it actually, <laughs> it's nice. Okay. Let's go. Do you want to, can, can you, can I, can I give you a thumbprint? Can you put your model on show? Yeah, let's do that. We'll show people the same model. So people see. Okay, so. Going back there, slowly but surely. And yeah, Lots I'm just trying the, the Google Glass thing right now. I thought it would go faster, but I'm just taking a lot. Yeah. Trying to see how it, this one is like the Google Glasses, this one is the side, and then this one is the stereo. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> so this is going to do the stereo panorama there. So you're, you're setting all of the cloud. Yeah, and right now. And how close to the weight on the cloud? Because some of you guys are like 33 hours, there's like some incredible time. But yeah, like you can't really do, like for this one, and for this one, you can't really do 
bigger than the, I think it's six or no. You can't do it more than large or you'll never receive them. Why is it? Do you just really put it in the back? Yeah, like I'll like just take this one and yeah. if I don't finalize it, they don't turn up good enough for the yeah. shopping. So, see like, if it's five hours now, but if I put it to large, it's like 37 hours. Oh, I see. Oh, but actually, yeah. But it doesn't you take don't, you don't want you don't even want to do that because even yeah. you know there's any cover shop that thinks the blurry filter you exactly. know, all these things. Yeah. And, you know. um, I have a question because okay. I already have two accounts. Yeah. So I went the password. Yes. So I created a third account, but I just created it from Revit. So I don't think I need an educational like uh, wow. can so I change my account? No, it's really account? you have to do it from within students.rvs.com at that site. Yeah. So I can't actually use this email account like because I'm an accident in the normal. Account. Yeah. Although having multiple accounts shouldn't really make any difference one way or the other. I think it's all about the same. Okay, I'll try that then. Yeah. Maybe to a student account because I noticed when I sent off the Google review. Yeah. That it, it said like you only have twenty five minutes left. So no. Oh no no. So you can definitely do it if you see it, but on your student account you have unlimited, right? Exactly. Like I have unlimited. Okay. Okay. Someone had said that they were they were counting down from hundred units. And I mean that's just basically about the way they set up the account. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Think, think it was Cool. Do you have it? Excellent. And what are you working on? It's like really cool. It's the 183 uh, yeah, construction. Yeah, exactly. Cool. And this is like up in San Francisco, a tower there? Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to throw a little uh, structural, some structural parts to it right now. Excellent. It is. Holly, you have questions. We're still answering questions. That's good. Yeah, I think it's a really good question. Yeah. 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 Ye
So what we'll do is not do that. We'll do another run, but leave a little air space. And as you leave air space, a good space is, since it's a three foot stairway, you want at least one and a half feet because that will be necessary to make the space for the landing. You can make it a little further if you want to leave a little more space. You can even come up a little bit if you want. But leave that space and what it'll do is it'll create the landing out of what's left over. So I can then take that and make the landing a bit smaller. If I move this this way, it'll make the landing a little smaller that way. But it's really just a question of putting both in and then uh, the landing will be created and then dusting it. So he's quite okay that way. Let's finish him up. Now, stairs are really kind of cool. I'm just gonna show a couple of variations because I love stairs. You have, let's even use your style. You are using open riser, middle stringer. So let's go ahead and same sort of thing. I need 18 stairs. I could say one, two, three, four, five, six. I can leave some space. One, two, three, four, five, six. Leave some space. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's sort of above my head right now, I think. Oops, it didn't make it. Hang on. There it goes. Okay, that's, that's a U-shaped stair. Okay, if you want that. Um, just one of the many different variations. Another stair you can create is, uh, some of you like to play around with round stairs. There's this shape. There's sort of a full spiral, and this is more like a curve that goes. Let's show you what this looks like. Again, do the center. Looks like a nice half curve. Yeah, lots of different choices. So, just be very free. Stairs have a lot of uh, options. And about the only way you get yourself in trouble is really if they uh, you know, get too pinched, something like that, but it can't create it. But let's take a look at those. Looks like it's still creating. Lots of different choices in terms of different stairs. But stairs are very customizable. Do you want just that, that L shaped stair? Is that what you have in mind? Actually, I have another question. Oh, yeah, please. How can I make sure that it goes from to the next level? Ah. It automatically sets that. Sure, level. let's take a look. When you create the stair, when you're first creating and you say stair, one of the properties is what level, upper level to lower, or lower level to upper level, and it computes. Now, if that is like 10 foot floors, which I think is the default, and you have 10 feet times uh, 12 inches, 120 inches, what it says is there's a rule that the risers can be no more than seven inches, so it'll break that up into the nearest whole increment, dividing by seven, so it tells us it's 18 steps. So then, as you're working, what happens is, as you're placing, let me zoom on in just so you can start see you better. Notice as I'm dragging, it actually is reporting to me. Four risers are created, 14 remaining. So it's telling you as you go. So if I want that to be nine and nine, I'll pull out to, how I know to stop is right there. There's nine gone and nine remaining. I'll go over here and come back. And notice that the landing's just kind of created there. Okay. Okay. That's what we call a dog leg stairway. Now, stairs and these automatic stairs, just so you know, they're very reconfigurable. I'm going to show you just a couple tricks. These stairs are kind of the default size, the default shape. If you go through and you want them to be wider, no worries. You can say that you want it to be four feet. Okay, you can make that four feet over there. Interestingly, just so you know, if you do go through and make it four feet, the way the code would have it is this should also be four feet wide. Okay. Just because it's supposed to be as wide as the stair. Okay. 
We can also go through and change these. These are all kind of standard shapes. To say, so to see this notion, I can change the shape of the stairs, and I can change the shape of the landing tube. And that's kind of OK, too. How that works, not that you need to do it, but just to show you, is you can go through, and if I edit that, I can say, do this. I'm going to convert it to a sketch. And a sketch lets us go through and take the boundary lines and do things custom. It's like right now, this is kind of a plain rectangle, which is quite OK. But if I want to go through and adjust those, now I'll say edit the sketch. And here are actually the lines that create it. So if I wanted to, for example, have a stairway that's splayed out on the end, yeah, you could really make them quite, quite custom to whatever you want. So you can do that. Another thing you can do is this landing has the same sort of properties. Right now, it's just doing its best to sort of fit within the space. But if you want a custom shape there, for example, I can convert this to a sketch. And I'll edit the sketch. Here are its boundaries. So if you have something special you want to do, you want to make it very long, that's fine. If you say that you want to make it round on the end, Really whatever you like. Oh, yeah. So lots of flexibility for stairs. <laughs> yeah. See, so, what other questions do you have? Anything else or is it you go to that? You have to run the class again. Sorry to keep you waiting. No worries. Okay. Let's uh, get you going a little bit, but uh, just you know, stop right in. If you have more questions. Thanks. Again, no worries. Okay. We'll finish that up. Groovy looking stairs. That's what you can find back there. Let's see what's going on. It's see close. you tomorrow. Very good. See you tomorrow. Okay, we're just continuing to hang around. So any crime, I take anything. <laughs> you think we can help with the structure, or you got that pretty much under control? Well, so I'm trying to throw in these columns. I kind of talked about uh, which, you know, where to put everything. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think would be the best way to at least for now, so I can place the column at the bottom. I'm just going to have visibility, like, I guess kind of, you're saying. I kind of know on the grid, like, where I should put the columns. Okay. Um, so what do you want to hide then? Um, to be honest, so if it's the makeup of the walls, maybe not the walls, I'm not sure. Either. You're putting columns at the grid. Are you putting it in all the grid locations or at specific locations? Yeah, you, you know. Yeah, at specific locations. So we have, like, two cores here. Yeah. Are you putting columns in kind of like level one to two and then you'll raise them up? Or uh, kind of copy them up? Or what are you um, doing? Yeah, I was probably going to copy them up because I know it's pretty much mm -hmm. it's pretty funky. But, uh, so, like, you have this big cantilever, so yep. the columns on the back side are going up to the top. Um, and then a lot of these columns are just going like this sixth floor here. You kind of split across there? Exactly. Good. But okay. Sure, yeah, so, a good approach is generally to put them all in in all the locations, copy them to all the floors, and then start knocking out the ones that you don't you need. Don't okay. It'll, it's easier generally to do that and then take out the ones you want and adjust them mm -hmm. as opposed to kind of trying to place them individually every time. Gotcha, yeah. Okay, so go back to one. And let's fix this. So in terms of level one, how about this? As you're placing them, um, you could put them in all the locations or put them on specific locations. But let's just go look at the column that I like. So go to structure. We'll say, uh, they were columns. What kind of concrete or steel? No, it's steel. So okay. Right. Steel. Great. So as you go putting them in there, the idea is what you want to try and do is really line up right with the intersections. So if you zoom in really close. Okay, you're doing that? Super. Great. And then as you put them here, watch out for this. Right now it's set to depth. So it's going to put them from level one to level zero. Okay, mm -hmm. and as you've been putting them in, are you putting them in from level one to level two or the other way? Um, I've been going, well, he wants them just to show some like piles kind of sort of like nine feet under like, ground level and then up like from one to two. So like negative nine to two, I guess. Oh, but do you want to put piles under there? You can do that too. Like, I get it for now, I'm just going to do the columns like that. You know? uh, I'll show you a really good, good way thing, yeah. Okay, maybe you go from one to two. Two. Super. Okay. Put a couple columns in for locations, and 
then we'll go through and we'll put some shears and some tiles in here. Okay, so just find some nice intersections. Super. Let's just say that's just like the one. Got it. Okay, let's look at it in 3D. piles underneath it. Yeah. Super. Let's go do this. Go to under structure. And we'll say uh, isolated foundations. Okay. Um, we're going to load in one. Say yes. And we're going to go and insert, go down to structural foundations. And then in here, we got pile caps. Go ahead and choose some of these. Let's take a look at them in the pictures. There's one that has a single pile. There's one that has two, three, four, yeah, and we can change it later, whatever you want. Okay, great, super. Now, what you're gonna do is as follows. Say, place it at the column, okay, and place it at level one. And what happens then is, when you choose the column, so see if you can get it. And now hit the finish. Okay, and now you have a pile there. So the thing is, go ahead and just put all your columns at level one, then you choose the columns with piles underneath them. It'll pop them right in there. Oh, that's awesome. Right at the right level. So it'll save us some time there. Yeah, so there's no point in it. Yeah, I just go start with just the idea of where the columns are. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, and I'd go for the super set of where they're going to be, that's get them on level one, and we'll copy those on the clipboard and say paste them to levels 2 through 41 or whatever. Okay. okay, and then we'll go through and in the 3D do knock out the ones that are sugar. Yeah. And then when they need to be extended, we'll extend some of those. Okay. But overall, that will give you the, the whole framework, and then we can sort of customize it. Perfect. Thank you. All right. What you got? I, yeah, I just have a question. And like a couple of weeks ago, we rendered this really quickly for our owners. Yes. To, and it turned out like it was a quick rendering, so the quality good. turned out pretty nice. But the other day, when we were then trying to send out renderings that weren't final, just to see yeah. the changes, and Stuff we got all looked like, like, see, like, is that because of the, that we have to, like, make the house higher, or do you think it's something from lighting? Yeah. Oh, no, in this case, generally what's going on, that's a quality issue in terms of that, in terms of the, the gradients. There's two things, so, yeah, like, for the most part, like, this is a reflection of the wall, so yeah. that's just the shiniest of the material, but this is actually just, I think, just the quality of the rendering. So, okay. even if you, like, um, if you, Go back to the, the view, or at least you download it now. On the web, you can see what the quality was that we sent it. See, like, they're all green. Yeah, they're green. Yeah. Yeah. So go back to, in the web interface uh, for the rendered gallery, we can see what the settings were. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't even, like, I, I don't even have them anymore. Because I know I have to re-render them. Because the other day I was oh, having issues. Well. Yeah. yeah, I was having issues the other day with because I had sent so many renderings. Me out. Like, oh, really? I was frozen out for a whole day. That's why okay. I was being. So, uh, here, over here, we even have sort of like 60 renderings going on. That's the lighting analysis. That's. Oh, that's what that's doing. Yeah. I don't know why it's taking so many. But I don't know. Okay. Maybe they can go down. <laughs> we'll see. So, any of these, go to my here, rendering quality finals. So, those are all finals. Yes. Yeah, Set all renderings. Let's just sort of see what else we can do. Let me find some of the older ones. If you have a little rendering, you just want to re-render it at a higher quality, although now you have to change the model. Yeah. You can rerun it from here. If you like, right click on yeah. it here, you can say rerun it. And yeah. change your settings, you can say re-render. Yeah. You can use the settings. Okay. Cool. At least that way you don't have to go back and start from scratch. Because I, I can see like the difference. Like these are already final. Yeah, in general, 
this is, this graininess is just quality. Mm -hmm. That's more, it's a shiny material. So then we use a little bit of shiny material. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I'm trying to, Thank you. 